Hi, I'm Miles from Carp School, and I'm going to show you the perfect pellet rig. It's great for when those carp get really wary of boilies. So this rig will enable us to use a pellet like this, a really small 8-10mm pellet, um, as, a, as a hook bait. Clearly you can't drill that because it would just keep crumbling and falling apart. So I'm going to show you how to mount a small pellet like that on the hair. First of all, we're going to tie a lasso in this hook link. We're going to do that by tying a three-turn grinner. So have two or three inches of hook link coming out from your fingers, that's the tag end, and create a small loop hanging down with a tag end closest towards you. Then I take my finger, whatever this one is, the ring finger but on the right hand, and I just pull some of that hook link material back up into my hand there. Keeping a bit of tension on with my left hand, I take the rest of the line, the rest of the hook link, and just pull it up into this pinch that I've got between my thumb and forefinger. Now we're going to take this tag end round three times to create a grinner. So it's going to be one, two, three turns. Now the reason we don't do any more is there's no strength in this, it's simply so that we can lasso our pellet on. So I've just pulled that down nice and tight. Now here I leave a little bit of a tag end because we're going to be able to open and close this knot up. And if we cut it a bit too short, then sometimes the knot can come undone. So leave a little tag end, probably only a couple of mil, but that can help. Now you can see there that that slides right on down and is lassoing around my finger. And we're just going to pop it around the outside of the pellet like so, and you just pull it on down. And there you have, nice and neatly, a pellet mounted on the end. So, so it's create a hair if you like. Okay, that can be opened up like so, and you can just change the bait as you need to. Put a new one in, so on. No bait and needles, nothing. Nice and simple. You can see there that I've rubbed that round the pellet a couple of times and the oils have absorbed into the hook link and almost disappear. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Okay, we now need to add a small piece of silicon that I'm going to use to uh, make sure that the hair leaves the shank of the hook in just the right place. Now with mono you can just slide the, te the, slide the end of the hook link up inside the silicon. Well that's pretty difficult with a supple piece of braid. So what I do is I cut my silicon piece of silicon like so, and I cut a short length off and I slide it onto a small splicing needle like this. I then fold my hook link over the splicing needle and then just slide the piece of silicon on and there you have your silicon nicely sitting on the hook link and slide that down towards the pellet. Take your chosen hook, here I've got a nice small size 10 hook and be really careful here to make sure that you pull the braid over your finger so that you're, put, so you're exposing as big a hole in this silicon as possible. Because remember, when you push this hook through, push the hook point through, you don't want to be catching that braid in any way. So with a bit of practice, you'll be able to simply slide your hook point through the silicon and turn it on round. I like my hair to leave the bend of the shank or the bend of the hook just about there, leaving almost a centimetre between the silicon and the hook bait. Then take the hook link material, take the tag end and pass it down through the eye to start tying a knotless knot. Remember you want to be going down through the eye towards the point of the hook, like so. So it's exiting through like, through like that. Make sure the hair is just the right length, hold it all in place. Make sure you take the wraps of the knotless knot around the back of the hook, not around the near side. Make sure you go around the back once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I then hold that in the pinch there to make sure those wraps don't come undone. And then take the tag end and push it back down through the eye of the hook, again towards the point to finish off the knotless knot, like so. 
You could fish it in that way, but I like to add a piece of silicon, sorry, not silicon, shrink tube, um, to create a nice angle where the hook link material leaves the eye of the hook. And I cut off a centimeter of this small, small bore shrink tube that then you slide down the hook link, down towards the hook, and I'm just gonna push it over the top of the eye of the hook. It's gonna cover some of the rolls of the knotless knot, and it's going to stick out past the eye, like so. We're then going to take that to the kettle um, and steam it over, the, over the, um, the nozzle of the kettle, making sure that none of the flames licking up from the stove or so on touch the uh, hook link material and can damage it. And uh, we're going to shrink, shrink that into a shape like so that's, that's creating the perfect angle for helping turn that hook when it's uh, picked up by a fish. Okay, so over the steam of a kettle, we're going to shrink the shrink tube, pulling it down at an angle like that, making sure it's dead in line with the point. You don't want to be off at an angle one way or the other making a reverse or otherwise it's got to be in line with the point. An angle, nice angle like that. Hold it down, make sure the shrink tube shrinks all the way down. A nice neat pellet rig. With the hook link material coming away from the eye of the hook at a good angle to turn the hook. You can then fish that with a great little PVA bag of pellets. And this is one of, one of my favorite stalking rigs for just lowering in the edge or can be fished out into open water with a spob mix of pellet and maybe hemp as well. That is an absolutely fantastic pellet rig.